know, to me, a lot of modern high-performance cars are so track-focused. You know, to go fast than you ever possibly go on the street. This is extremely comfortable. Transmission is great. Clutch is smooth. Wonderful to, to use. Plenty of power. Oh, I love that exhaust note. Yeah, it just sounds fabulous. I think I would prefer this to a modern car. Yeah, I agree. Welcome to the episode of Jay Lone's Garage, once again being visited by automotive royalty. This is one of 14. This is a 1967 Ferrari 365 California. Is it a Spider? Spider, yep. It's a Spider. Okay, which means, of course, convertible. This is what Ferraris looked like when I was a kid. You know, when you're in high school and you'd see one of these. Well, you never saw one. You saw it in magazines, at least not where I lived. But the beautiful Barani wire wheels, just everything a classic Ferrari should be. Manual transmission. Doesn't have the gated shifter, which surprised me, though. But it had just about the biggest motor they had back in the day. Beautiful car. I think sort of, I imagine this was built for the American market. It's big. It's powerful. It's extremely comfortable. Uh, just classic, uh, classic road-going Ferrari from the 60s. This belongs to the uh, fabled Nethercut collection. <clears throat> you know, we do a lot of the cars and people think, uh, oh, they just got old stuff there. But no, they, well, this is old too, but it's modern old. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a Ferrari. And it's a rare Ferrari, extremely collectible. I have no idea what the value of this is. I'm sure it's in the, if not tens of millions of dollars, certainly right up there. Uh, let's meet Cameron. Cameron Richards, you met him before, as I said. He is the vice president of another cut collection, and he's brought us this. And you drove this, right? Didn't No trailering these. Nope, drove her all the way down the road. And, and uh, took the long way. It took you like two hours to get yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah, to okay. cruise by. Up the hills, uh, came down through San Diego, <laughs> then back up the coast. Yeah, hit PCH that. in this car is great. Well, it, it does make you want to drive. Did, did your great-grandfather buy this new? No, he actually bought it in 1981 okay. uh, from Tom Barrett, actually. Oh, sure. And it, it was kind of funny because JB didn't like sports cars. Right. And uh, he had a bunch of friends in the car world that were like, you need to buy this Ferrari, man. Like, it's you have to. And he, he didn't really care for sports cars. He liked the big luxury and right. stuff. But we're glad that he uh, listened to his friends for this one. Well, this is almost, almost like an Americanized Ferrari in the sense that it's it's American size, certainly it's big. Yep. I mean, you can be six foot five and drive this thing. I mean, it's, it's a big car. It's a big, comfortable car with big, comfortable seats. Uh, this is the day before the buttock clutching Recaros and everything. This is when you get in a car and you drove to Vegas, you drove to San Francisco. Uh, yeah, just beautiful. Can we open the hood? Let's, Let's open do the it. Hood and show them what that is. Is this a Colombo V12? Colombo V12, 4.4 right. liters. Right. There we go. This was the most amazing sight when I was a 16-year-old kid, you know. This is unbelievable. The dual oil filters always impressed me. I always thought that was extra cool. You had an extra one, just in case. It's just in case. Any lint got through the first one, you know. And of course, the multiple carburation, 4.4-liter, uh, which really isn't that big by American standards. What's that about? Uh, it's about 267, yeah, 267 cubic inches, yeah, I believe. Something like that, something like that, yeah. Very nice. You see, you got the Optima battery. We use those and everything, too. There's no gas given off, so it's a sealed battery. Has this car been maintained or was it restored? It looks probably restored. Was so I call it a light restoration. It's been right. repainted. Okay. Uh, it was painted back in the 80s, actually, in the red. The Ferrari red has held up pretty well over the years being out here in the desert. And the interior was redone. Other than that, mechanically, it's Still original, right. just very well kept over the years. How many miles on it? 18,000. Yep. Okay. She so doesn't get out too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, it gets driven. It gets driven. And it has a back seat, too, which is, uh, it almost seems secondary, but it's a, it's a kind of Porsche 365 size back seat. But you could, you could fit back there, no problem. Uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful car. Pina Farina, is this Pina Farina? Pina yeah. Farina yeah. design, yep. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the most legendary greatest car designers of all time i mean it's just just a stunning automobile and Looks out like of the 14 i i have never seen another one right? in person i haven't i don't even know who owns the other ones uh they're pretty kept quiet i guess these days of course the 67 ferrari was still pretty small i mean remember ford was going to buy it for 10 million dollars right that was yeah. sort of the idea so you know that's 
it was a small factory with artisans and guys working on this stuff. You know, when I was a kid, this seemed like the most complicated thing in the world. Now with modern cars, it seems so simple. Valve covers, there's the spark plugs, easy to get to. Air filter comes right off. Oil filters, didn't have to get under the car, just unscrew yep. them. You know, pr pretty, pretty, seems like it'd be pretty easy to service. A massive alternator. Uh, I guess it was pretty big for back in the day. It also has twin uh, distributor caps. Which twin is, distributor uh, caps, that's right. Yeah. The whole layout of this engine is just artwork. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it, it is a, it's a beautiful engine. It's a beautiful, beautiful machine. Very nice, very nice. What else? Yeah, 320 horsepower is very good for 1967. You know, it's funny because Ferraris were not, especially in this period, they're pretty conventional in the sense it's an engine. I mean, he was one of the last guys to go to disc brakes, all that kind of stuff. Pretty traditional chassis, you know, just constant little improvements, you know. It always seems to be about the engine, so, uh, yeah, just beautiful. All right, let's close the hood up and show the rest. But actually, these are only offered to certain select VIP customers, right? That was... Yep, it was a very limited production. Uh, for VIP clients for Ferrari. Right. So the people who bought a lot of Ferraris knew what they wanted. They wanted something even more exclusive. And this is probably for the older Ferrari customer, the guy that had some money, maybe in his 60s or even 70s, wanted a comfortable seat, you know, proper, you know, driving position, not all hunched over, you know. So, yeah, this is a premium automobile. And <clears throat> there's nothing as stunning as those brawny wire wheels. They no, really they, are just... They are the best. Yeah, they're just, they're just beautiful really make the whole car. And it's got a good sized trunk too, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, you can actually probably almost fit a set of golf clubs in there, almost. Yeah, why drive a Ferrari when you could play golf? Exactly. <laughs> That's a pretty good sized trunk. Yeah, you can fit a few suitcases and... And there's maybe... a spare tire under there as well, correct? Yep. And you got your Ferrari tool roll. Yeah, the Ferrari tool bag is uh This is rather futuristic, look, this rear tailpiece, isn't it? That's yeah, the taillights are very different from other yeah. California models. Almost looks American, almost looks like DeSoto or something from the yeah. early 60s. And the big yellow lights, they kind of remind me of like eyebrows or right, right. something along those lines. And of course, nothing sexier than the four exhaust pipes. The pipes are awesome. They stick out nice and far past the uh, back of the car, and uh, this car has a great exhaust note. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I say, let's take it for a ride. Well, this is very American, the way this opens. Look at that. Yeah, very soft to the touch, too. Yeah. Don't have to pull very hard. Uh, now, this is Ferrari, huh? <laughs> so you turn that on, put on your fuel pump. Yep. And give her a crank. Hi. Sounds good. It's a V12. Boy, that is so nice, so smooth. the big giant pie plate gauges. Yeah, definitely uh, don't need cheaters for those. Yeah, if you need your glasses to see this, you shouldn't be driving. <laughs> You're right. It's funny, you know, I know it's only 320 horsepower, but boy, it's the torque. It, it certainly feels like a lot more. Definitely, yeah. Boy, what a wonderful driving classic Ferrari this is. And uh, this car was $28,000 brand new, so it wasn't really in the market for anything American to compete with. It was just way more expensive. Yeah, in 67, be yeah. But the horsepower is, uh, I mean, muscle cars like a Ford Mustang from the mid-2000s only had 300 horsepower. Right. Boy, smooth as silk, isn't it? Really nice. Yeah, it's just like butter. You have no idea if you closed your eyes that it was from the 60s. I know. I know they're not your cup of tea, but you look pretty good in this thing. I love this. No, I love these. I love Ferraris. I love especially early Ferraris. Yeah, the old ones are the way to go. I mean, my, I've never had a complaint with the cars. My complaint was always with, 
you know, you got to buy two Mondials before you're allowed to buy yeah, it. Yeah. You know, I mean, just all that stuff. Nothing. The cars are excellent. I mean, one fun to drive, impressive handle, everything you expect them to be. My brothers and I, we always had fun um, growing up because every Ferrari guy that we'd see at car shows, they'd always have to have the Ferrari Polo along with it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we'd always walk up and be like, hey, do you own a Ferrari? Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, I'll talk to this little kid about their car they own. It's fun. You know, we forgot to mention the covered headlights. This is a European model, so the Americans didn't have it, but they still had it in Europe, didn't they? Yep. Yeah, it's interesting because most of this particular, out of the 14, most of them that we know of are still in Europe. However, they were definitely targeted towards the American market. Yeah. And Ferrari really hasn't strayed too far off from the, you know, the recent California models they made. I think I would prefer, prefer this to a modern car. Yeah, I agree. You know, to me, a lot of modern high-performance cars are so track-focused, you know, to go faster than you ever possibly go on the street. This is extremely comfortable, the, the, and it's a chair. It's, it's, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's really comfortable. Transmission is great, clutch is smooth, wonderful to, to use, wonderful to shift. Plenty of power. Oh, I love that exhaust note. Yeah, it just sounds fabulous. I love looking at the huge gauges. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Pin and Farina, I mean, I've never seen them make a bad car, and they, they just make such beautiful, elegant vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of built for the tall American driver. Yep, yeah, my feet aren't even touching the uh, firewall right now. This doesn't have air conditioning, does it? No. It does, I oh, it think. Does. It does. It's got the vents for it, but uh, yeah. it, the convertible does go up, but why put it up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that torque is just so effortless with this V12. Boy, it really it is. It pulls right away. Have you ever driven an F40 by chance? Yes, wonderful. Yeah, those are... Uh, F40 is one of my favorites. Have you, have you guys got one over there? Oh, I wish, but no. <laughs> This is the only Ferrari we've got, but we're we're really happy with this one. Yeah, it's but, uh, great. Wouldn't mind having an F40. Uh, those are one of the best cars ever built, I'd say. And I drove this on the highway on the way here, and I mean, the steering wheel, you could have just let go. It was yeah. dead straight. It wasn't finding any grooves in the road or anything like that. And I've always wanted to dress up like Ferris Bueller and drive this around for a day. Yeah. Well, you could, actually. Yeah. I'm not even sure how Ferris Bueller dresses, so. Boy, this thing just wants to run, doesn't it? It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It definitely, uh, yeah, it's not a, it's not just one of, like, the Californias, a lot of people, like, in the modern ones, they think they're just kind of like, oh, you buy it for the wife or something. And, right, right. But, no, this thing, this thing will go. This is like high-speed cruising. You yeah. know, about 80 and 90 is where it wants to be. Yeah, driving on the highway it was just effortless. It was oh, so, yeah. it was so easy. Nerve-wracking, but... <laughs> I love the like the pistol grip handle on the on yeah. the shifter is great. You can feel the heat coming out of the shift boot. Yeah. Good elbow car. You get your elbow out. Right, of it. right, yeah. You could be really ugly, but still, you know, get a lot of attention in this car. That's right. <laughs> This is a very comfortable car. Boy, you can drive this thing all day long. Yeah, you really sit in this thing. Yeah, I was a little upset to drive over. We're, we're, we're so close to each other. I wish, uh, wish the drive was a little longer. It's, this car is just a dream to cruise. I know. If Ferrari built a Rolls Royce, it would be this. I think people are starting to think maybe the museum was just old luxury cars, but you got all kinds of cool stuff over there. Yeah, we got some, uh, you know, granted, it, most of it is old, but not everything's just uh, a four-door. <laughs> we also have a train. And you got a train, too. There you go. 
Well, this is one of the best. I'm, I'm stunned at how nice this is to drive. Because I've, I've driven a lot of mid-60s Ferraris, and they're a bit more raucous than this. This is just so turbine-like smooth. It just pulls nicely. It shifts. Power steering's nice. It's just a beautiful, beautiful automobile drive. Thanks for bringing this thing by. Thank really you, appreciate James. it. It's always a pleasure. Hey, if you'd like to see this car, one of 14, it's coming to the uh, Nethercup Museum in Silmar, California. It's about eight miles from my shop. And fun place to go, all kinds of fascinating automobiles you won't see anywhere else. And in California, that's saying something. See you guys next week.